For the past three episodes, we have been in Franklin, Tennessee, examining one of the most violent altercations that occurred during the whole span of the Civil War at the, the Battle of Franklin. Uh, so if you haven't watched any of those episodes, go back and check those out. Uh, there's, you know, blood stains in the Carnton house from Confederate soldiers. Uh, you go to the Carter house and it's completely shot up, has bullet holes everywhere. Fascinating, fascinating place uh, that if you're ever in the Nashville area, you, you need to go see it. However, there was one story that Brad told me about an individual named Todd Carter who grew up there in the Carter house that I, I just couldn't seamlessly work into any of the episodes, but it's too good of a story to not be told. So you can kind of think of this as, I guess, a, a bonus episode of History Traveler looking at the tragic story of Todd Carter. So there was a Confederate soldier by the name of Todd Carter that grew up here at the Carter House and found his way back during the Battle of Franklin, was mortally wounded, and they have a bunch of his possessions here. So here's his wallet. They also have the sword that belonged to Todd Carter, some stirrups and straps that belonged to him, but probably the craziest thing is they have the dadgum bullet that was lodged in his head. My goodness. So on the wall right here are the three Carter sons who were alive by the time of the Civil War. All three of them participated in the war as Confederate soldiers in the 20th Tennessee Infantry. So Moscow, Francis, and Theodric, known as Todd. And of course, for many, many years, people who visited Carter House uh, would have heard and continue to hear the story of Todd Carter because it's, it's fairly iconic. So Todd was, um, when he enlisted, he was 21. He made his way up in the ranks. Um, he was a captain. He was an aide to the quartermaster. He um, actually wrote as a war correspondent to a newspaper under the code name Mint Julep. So the Mint Julep letters are fairly well known. Well, in November of 1863, Todd was captured and sent up to prison in Johnson's Island, Ohio. And he was there for a few months. And we know he was there. He corresponded with his family. They knew he was there. But in February, of 1864, Todd's letters home stopped. And as far as we know, the family had no contact with him from that point until the Battle of Franklin. Now, in the years since we've been able to piece together some of these, uh, from some of the details that happened, what it seems like is Todd was being transferred from Johnson's Island prison to a different prison. And en route, he jumped from the prison and escaped. He takes this route that we've, we've recently found more details about exactly what he does, but long story short, he makes his way to the Atlanta area, back to the Army of Tennessee, um, reunites with his regiment, the 20th Tennessee, just in time for Hood to begin his uh, Nashville campaign. So all of a sudden, Todd finds his, so he didn't go home when he escaped. He rejoined his regiment in time for them to move from the Atlanta area up through Tennessee, back towards Todd's childhood home. And on the way here, a couple days prior to the battle, Todd uh, was granted a furlough pass to visit his family. So just this little piece of paper saying, basically, you can take a couple of days off and visit your family, who he hadn't seen, in, as far as we know, since he enlisted in the beginning of the war. He made his way back home. Late night of, of November 29th, he stayed a couple of miles down the road in a different house. 
Um, we don't know why he didn't come all the way back home, but he decided to stay in this other house a few miles down the road. On the morning of November 30th, when he then attempted to make his way to Franklin, um, upon getting near town, he realized that Franklin was already overrun, overrun with U.S. soldiers. The, the Federal Army had arrived early that morning. They took over his house, and there's just no way he can get here because he would be captured. So he finds his way back to his regiment, the 20th Tennessee, participates in the battle, ends up leading an assault towards Carter Hill, towards his childhood home. During this assault, Todd is mortally wounded, severely wounded multiple times, um, actually took half of a bullet in his eyebrow. The family emerges from the cellar the morning after the battle, where they had been for 10 or 12 hours, hearing everything, but again, no idea that Todd's out there. No way of knowing that he was out there. They haven't heard from him, that we know if they hadn't heard from him since February. They are notified by an unknown soldier first and then an officer that Todd was here and that he was severely wounded. So Todd's father, some of his older sisters, Todd's older brother Moscow, who was here uh, on parole, end up going out to the battlefield, finding Todd, bringing him home. Eventually Todd ends up in the parlor, the room right across the hall. He lives about a day and a half. And on December 2nd, Todd died in the house he was born in. Well, this is the parlor that Brad was just referring to that Todd Carter died in. It's kind of interesting getting some of these personal stories from uh, the Civil War and from the Battle of Franklin. Now, this room also served as, uh, I guess you could say, the, the Union Army headquarters. So here you can see this field desk. Everything that you see in here, all of the furniture is you know, original to the time period of the Civil War. So that's one thing I really appreciate about visiting here is, is you're going to see things as they were. Very interesting. Okay, now here is the advantage of going through one of these places with somebody who knows what they're talking about. This might look like just an ordinary bookcase, but what makes it cool is that little dark spot right there is a patched-in bullet hole from the Battle of Franklin. 